Imagine, if you will, that contentious standing room only parent meeting on your new math program. I was in just such a room a year ago. When the week-long meeting ended, I went away feeling beat up. And I asked myself a simple question, why? Everyone in the room wanted exactly the same thing for our students to be successful in mathematics. And the changes we made in our math program were producing the best scores ever on the state math test. Part of the problem is that we live today in the instructional stereotypes of the 18th century. The first American math book established the math teaching process as state a rule, provide an example, practice the rule. In 1821, a different instructional approach was offered. The inductive method recommended that students work through a series of examples using concrete materials so they would discover and understand the rules. So within the first 50 years of the country's founding, the great mathematics education debate was established. Should students learn procedures, facts, skills, or should they learn concepts with understanding? And how should that math be taught? The history of mathematics education in this country is a 200-year pendulum swing between those two poles. In the 50s and 60s, we tried new math. The focus was on the structure of mathematics, developing the habits of mind of mathematicians. We all know new math didn't last, and we went back to the basics. In 1989, NCTM started the standards-based reform effort. By the late 90s, those standards were receiving criticism. The criticism then is the same as it is now with the Common Core. Parents expected teachers to tell. We encourage students to think. In 2010, the Common Core state standards were released, and there was great enthusiasm that finally the pendulum swing might stop. Those initially well-received standards are now under attack from both the right and the left. Why all the controversy? Usually the reason is misinformation. Some think the standards are a federal conspiracy. Some think, some confuse standards with curriculum, confuse standards with testing, confuse standards with instruction. And now all this crap spreads virally <laughs> through social media. Some of the postings that went viral include using the number line to understand subtraction or the 10 frame to build number sense. But in both cases, the objectors confused an instructional strategy with a mathematical standard. It is so tough because teaching is a cultural activity. Nearly every adult in this country has experienced 1,500 hours of math instruction. That creates a powerful cultural expectation for what teaching and learning should look like. But we did not all grow up watching a doctor at work for 180 days a year for 13 straight years. So we trust her professional expertise. And when she offers us the most recent treatment protocol, we don't push back and say, treat me with leeches instead. <laughs> the research on effective teaching and learning is known and it's summarized in principles to actions in six principles of highly effective math programs. Principles to Actions offers eight research-informed instructional strategies that when effectively implemented in positive environments advance student learning. We know what makes a difference. We simply need to implement it consistently in each and every classroom. We need to clearly define for everyone what mathematics literacy means in the 21st century. Our students need to learn how, why, and when while building a positive mathematical identity. There is no reason this should be controversial. We need standards in common and we should stand up for them. There's no reason expectations should be different in California than they are in Maine. We need to tell people there's no such thing as new math. There's no such thing as common core math. But there are researched, informed instructional strategies today. Once the goal was simply to know how to do something, now it's to know how, why, and when. So we use visual representations and meaningful algorithms to help students make sense of mathematics. With effective instruction, we can help all students learn how, why, and when. We need to remind our critics that we are making progress. Not enough, and not for each and every student. But students today know more math than their parents and grandparents did when they were in school. This is a critical point. No child left behind is gone. Now is the time to stop the pendulum swing. We know students benefit from a balanced curriculum. Employers want students who can critically think and use their skills and understanding. And we have consensus on the elements of effective instruction.
My challenge to you is to become an advocate for common rigorous standards. Be an advocate for research and farm instructional practices. Be an advocate for a balanced curriculum. We owe it to our students, ourselves, and our country. Thank you.